as in all other literatures of the world so also in the english literature poetry has been the first form adopted for the expression of human feelings drama novel and essay are of later origins in english the first real poet known to us is chaucer drama has its beginning in the mysteries or miracle plays to trace the history of the english essay we shall have to go back to the elizabethan age the miscellaneous work of a few university wits like green lodge and nash has some traces of novel it also has the first anticipation of the essay apology for poetry of sir philip sidney too has a semblance of the essay form the essay in its real form which was given to it by the french essayist monte comes into existence in 1597 with the publication of a short series of essays by francis bacon he is the first real essayist in english he is also the greatest for his sheer mass and weight of genius bacon stands foremost in the field of the english essay his definition of essay was dispersed meditations as an essayist bacon is a class by himself he is the supreme master of the aphoristic style there is in his essays a aphoristic touch sententious wisdom and astute expediency there is also pithiness poignancy and beauty in finish terseness of expression and epigrammatic brevity are the most outstanding features of his writing his essays are the thoughts of a philosopher in undress He does not take his readers into confidence as do the later writers like Lamb and Hazlitt. After Bacon, Sir William Cornwallis and Robert Johnson may be put in the class of the aphoristic essayists, uh, though they have little in common with him. Ben Jonson is another writer of great repute. and is chiefly known as a great dramatist poet and critic in the first half of the 17th century there flourished in england a group of writers character writers thomas dekker joseph hall sir thomas overbury john earl are of the first rank among the character writers Another name to be mentioned in this connection is that of Thomas Fuller. He however differs from the rest of the character writers in that he garnishes his essays with stories. Owen Feltham, William Drummond and Thomas Brown are some of the noteworthy writers who instead of doing the most popular exercise of the delineation of character sailed in different directions and cannot be put together in any one particular class drummond's a cypress grove is said to be the first conscious and sustained effort in english to write poetical prose and sir thomas brown's religio medici is a classic in prose in abraham cowley we find the connecting link between bacon and edison he cultivated a form of essay more intimate and confidential though less profound weighty and philosophical than the baconian after abraham cowley comes in uh, the age of comes the age of modern english prose the restoration says matthew arnold marks the real moment of birth of a modern english prose 
of this period, the important names are those of Halifax, Temple, and Dryden. Of these, Dryden is the most important. He is not only the first great modern prose writer, but also the first great modern critic. His prose writing consists mainly of essays and prefaces. Dryden's age in literature is recognized as the age of prose and reason. Several causes are attributed to the introduction and establishment of this new prose. The spread of the spirit of common sense and of the crucial temper of the mind, the extending influence of science, the growing up of a public with miscellaneous tastes, and an immense development of journalism led to the rapid development of modern prose, chiefly the essay. Daniel Defoe is pioneer not only of the novel but also of journalism. In the early part of the 18th century, a considerable advance was made in the development of the short essay. The rise of the periodical press helped a good deal in this direction. The periodical essay was born of the brain of Richard Steele. The Tatler was born in 1709 and the Spectator two years later. A number of periodicals followed, making essay a very popular form of literature. The names of Edison and Steele are often mentioned in conjugation. The two were friends and collaborators in The Tatler and The Spectator. Richard Steele's was the more richly originative uh, mind of the two. Edison, however, is superior to Steele as an essayist. His style is more refined and polished than Steele's. The contribution of the two essayists to the English essays is great. They made the essay form a most popular one by painting the contemporary life of England in their essays. The essay became the true picture of contemporary life. Essay as a branch of literature justifies Matthew Arnold's opinion relating to literature as a criticism of life. Fashions, dress, practical jokes, manners, coffee houses, conversations and such things became the subjects of the essays of Edison and Steele. And by the time Charles Lamb, the prince of English essays, appeared in the literary horizon, the English essay had gained its wide popularity as a distinct form of literature. The enormous rise of periodicals gave a great impetus to the writers and proved a blessed boon to the development of the essay.